Hi, I'm Michael Gross, host of the B&O Railroad Museum's television network. The 18th and 19th century rendition of Santa Claus was uh, much different than we picture him today. Depending upon a family's ethnicity, St. Nicholas, Father Christmas, Pilsnickel, or Santa Claus were some of the names given to a, a stern man bearing gifts for good boys and girls and a severe reprimand for those who misbehaved. The origins of Santa Claus date back over 1800 years to a Christian bishop born in Asia Minor, which is part of eastern Turkey today. Nicholas, who lived between 280 and 343 AD, was the son of wealthy parents who died while he was young. Raised as a devout Christian, he dedicated his life to serving God and used his inheritance to help those in need. He would serve as the Bishop of Mira and was often described as tall, thin, pale, and was pictured wearing a bishop's mitre, a pointed hat, and carrying a staff. He was associated with many good deeds and informally and formally recognized as a saint after his death. Today, St. Nicholas is known as the patron saint of children, sailors, travelers, and even pirates. Germans celebrated St. Nicholas Eve on December 5th, the day before St. Nicholas's death. St. Nicholas was often accompanied by a man named Pelsnickel, who wore a great cape, fur cap, bells, a clanking chain that dragged when he walked, and he carried a large rod and a heavy bag. He lectured naughty children, sometimes threatening to throw them in his bag and do away with them. Eventually, Pelsnickel appeared alone on December 5th and cautioned children to be good, and Old Nicholas would appear on December 24th. As time went by, December 5th was celebrated less and less, which was largely due to Christian attempts to de-emphasize Pelsnickel as a pagan figure. And the two characters, Pelsnickel and Saint Nicholas, merged. In the United States, St. Nicholas appeared alone on December 24th, known as St. Nicholas Evening, celebrated by German immigrants and later adopted by English, Irish, and Scottish immigrants, and eventually many Americans. Stay tuned for information on upcoming events at the B&O Railroad Museum. It was Clement Moore's The Night Before Christmas, written in 1822, that began the transformation of St. Nicholas from a thin, tall religious figure to a jovial, white-bearded fellow by the mid-1800s. Moore's St. Nicholas was a thoroughly American invention that many countries around the world would come to embrace. Widely read, his words captured the imagination of children and parents alike and would lead to the endearing image of Santa Claus that continues to be a part of Christmas tradition today. While Moore's poem marked the beginning of Santa's transition, the man most responsible for changing our visual perception and image of Santa Claus was Thomas Nast a political cartoonist known for his biting satire and promotion of just causes. Nast's enduring rendition of Santa Claus is easily recognizable today, 
and was the embodiment of the jolly, round-bellied, white-bearded, fur-clad provider of good cheer described in Clement Moore's poem, The Night Before Christmas. Nast's first illustration of Santa was drawn in December of 1862 and appeared in Harper's Weekly, an illustrated newspaper of the day, on January 3, 1863. Drawn during the American Civil War, Nast used Santa to promote and support the Union war effort and provide comfort to the Union soldiers away from their families due to the conflict. He depicted a very patriotic Santa Claus, wearing a suit of red, white, and blue, and in later versions he carried swords, guns, and even had a U.S. Army belt buckle. It was Nast who was responsible for placing Santa's home at the North Pole, away from the spying eyes of children and firmly on neutral soil, so no country could claim him as their own. Nast's images were widely recognized throughout America and embodied Santa Claus well into the 20th century. It wasn't until Coca-Cola artist Hadun Sundblom put a bottle of Coke in Santa's hand in 1931 that the modern version of Santa was introduced. Sundblom is also credited with the introduction of department store and shopping mall Santas familiar to many around the world. From the day after Thanksgiving through the end of each year, the B&O Railroad Museum holds its annual holiday festival of trains and toys. Be sure to visit Santa Claus at the B&O while experiencing the world of model and toy trains. This is Michael Gross wishing you the very best for this holiday season. Thanks for watching the B&O Railroad Museum Television Network. Interested in learning more about the B&O Railroad Museum and Ellicott City Station? Follow us on Facebook and Twitter with daily updates on upcoming events, coupons, photographs, history, and things to do in Baltimore, you'll never be off track.